Hey there, folks. Welcome back for part two of Take This's video series on content creators and occupational burnout. In the first video, you'll find the link below in the description, uh, we talked about occupational burnout, what it is, and how it's more than just being exhausted or overworked. Occupational burnout, which is what we're talking about here, as opposed to you know how burnout is used in other contexts, is a significant chronic condition in response to long-term environmental workplace stress. It has three parts according to a widely used model by Dr. Christina Maslach. Exhaustion, ineffectiveness, and personal detachment and cynicism about work. Now, burnout isn't just one of these things. It's when someone chronically experiences all three. And the effects of burnout are also chronic, and it can last months or even years, lingering even after you leave a job. Now, while burnout is not generally considered a mental health diagnosis, it often co-occurs with other major mental health conditions, like major depressive disorder, as an example. But if that's what burnout is, we're left asking, what causes occupational burnout? In simplest terms, burnout is caused by a mismatch between a person and their work environment. It generally has to do more with the job conditions than the person, though personal strengths and challenges can play a part. I'm going to repeat that. Occupational burnout is more about the job conditions than you as a person. Everyone has their limits, and those systemic mismatches push us past those limits. Think of it like a water glass. Some of us are born with bigger water glasses, some of us are born with a smaller water glass. But no matter who you are, environmental stressors and mismatches can make anyone's glass overflow. You gonna stop that or no, you're not. Oh, oh God, oh God. Ah, cut. The point is that uh, while there are some things that you as an individual can do to help decrease the risk of burnout. Occupational burnout is more about the environment and the system. And actually, on that note, uh, content platforms, meet me over here for a quick sidebar. Hey there, content platforms. Uh, while I'm gonna do my best to talk about strategies that individual content creators can use to decrease the risks of burnout, I need you to be aware of something. Individual solutions are just stopgap measures unless the work environment changes. Now, those changes are on you because you provide the framework in which content creators exist. Now, I wanna be clear. I'm not talking about any one of you. This is a group conversation, okay? If you wanna decrease the burnout of your creators, your actions need to reflect their interests in a way that they recognize. Otherwise, if you say you care about burnout, but you don't respond in a way that meets their needs, it actually increases your content creator's risks of burnout. Please pay attention to these videos to get ideas about what you can change about the platforms. Uh, but for now, uh, you know, let's get back to the content creators, okay? Where were we? Oh yeah, okay, common factors that contribute to burnout. What are they? Workload, reward, control, community, values, and fairness. You know, six factors is a lot for one video, so for now, let's look at the first three, okay? Workload, reward, and control. When we talk about workload as a factor, we're talking about a mismatch between the amount of work you need to do and your personal ability to do it sustainably. You know, it's probably the most obvious factor. You know, you're either overworked or you're not. There are a lot of reasons that creators get overworked. And you know, one of them is the destructive myth that you have to create constantly, 24 hours a day, seven days a week in order to be successful. <laughs> While it's true that you need to put out enough regular content, consistency and quality are often more important than volume, especially you know, if you already have a full-time job. Plus, you know you do a lot more than what people see on camera. That takes up a lot of your time too. So obviously platform format plays a part in this, but in general, favor sustainable consistency over constancy. Also, because it needs to be said, take regular time off. 
that doesn't necessarily mean a formal vacation, though that's great if you can do that. What it means is regular psychological separation from work during off hours. And we talk about some individual strategies for this in the previous video that's linked below. It may seem obvious, but your brain needs a break to be effective. You're more creative when you're rested. Creating psychological separation from work can help with that. Contributing factor two is reward. When there's a mismatch between the effort you put into a job and the rewards you get, it contributes to burnout. This can mean financial reward because we all wanna get paid, but it can also mean internal rewards like satisfaction and recognition. A big challenge about content creation is that like a lot of creative and entrepreneurial pursuits, it doesn't have predictable, consistent paychecks like being a full-time employee at an established company. Plus, while hard work is important for growth, hard work doesn't guarantee steady, consistent growth. Understanding this and setting reasonable goals and expectations can feed your sense of reward. If people set their goals too high, they're gonna feel defeated if they don't reach them. So you should have specific goals that are moderately challenging, but if you're not consistently meeting them, they might be too challenging. If your goal is to make more money doing content creation, diversifying your income sources is a suggestion we've heard from several creators. The most successful full-time creators I know don't make the bulk of their money from the content platforms themselves. They use their channels as a launch pad for other opportunities, whether it's writing, speaking, or as a way of improving their future full-time job prospects with other companies. Several content creators we spoke with said that focusing on establishing consistent sources of income from sites like Patreon or Kofi, coffee, Kofi, coffee, I don't know. Establishing more consistent sources of income was monumental in fighting their own burnout. Though those sources can fluctuate too, the folks we talked to said that the performance of individual streams or videos made less of an impact on them. Now they said this improved their ability to deliver higher quality content on their channels. As you don't have a ton of control over how quickly you grow, a potential strategy here is to make sure you're creating content that you truly enjoy increasing your satisfaction level. That way you can stick with it long enough to hopefully grow a bigger audience and get financial rewards. But even if you're not making a lot of money on your content, if you're still enjoying it, there's a better chance you can sustain it. This brings us to factor number three. So let's talk about control and autonomy and how work gets done and how a lack of control contributes to burnout. In a lot of workplaces, lacking control means things like uh, being micromanaged or having no say in your work goals, timelines, or how you accomplish things. When it comes to content creation, you have a lot of autonomy and control, but there are still things that can feel out of your hands. Now, some of it might be high-level stuff like platform policies, algorithms, or interface changes a lack of safety and moderation tools, plus things like trolls and harassment can also make you feel like you don't have control over your workspace. You better believe those things can lead to burnout too. While some things might feel out of control, there are some things you can. The first is the content itself. You know, on a platform level, if the algorithms are constantly shifting and changing, keeping up with that becomes a job on its own. And the same thing with updates to platform features and functions. Every platform change is a new learning curve that can be a huge headache. It can feel like optimizing your content to those changes takes creative choice away from you. Now, one tip we heard from a few folks is you do your reasonable best to follow things like platform algorithms and the trends that you need to, but put more focus on just making your content as good as it can be. There's stuff you're good at and that you want to make. And if you can thread that needle, that's more sustainable. Essentially, when you can, favor improvements in the content itself over chasing trends. The second thing you can control is your schedule and how you work. Some people work better in the morning. Some people work better in the evening. Some people like compressing everything 
into one or two days, while others like things distributed in little chunks over the week. Every one of us has different strengths and styles when it comes to getting work done, and figuring out yours and creating your content in a way that plays to your strengths can be super empowering in fighting burnout. Bringing it all back. There are six common factors which contribute to occupational burnout, and in this video, we talked about three of them. Workload, reward, and control. Now, it may seem obvious to some how these factors affect burnout, uh, but when we think about how much of the content creator workload is behind the scenes, how little money most content creators earn, as well as it being a pretty chaotic career, well, hi burnout. If you suspect you're struggling with burnout, consider reaching out to a qualified mental health professional who can help identify and potentially address the underlying causes. If you head over to takethis.org forward slash resources, you can find a number of therapist directories, uh, including searching for low cost, no cost providers, articles on how to find a therapist who matches your needs, and many more free resources. If you're a content creator who successfully navigated one or more of the burnout factors in this video, help support other creators by letting us know how you did it in the comments below. Thanks to our friends at Rainbow Six and Riot for making this video possible. The next video in our burnout series is gonna focus on mismatches in community, fairness, and values and how they contribute to occupational burnout. Make sure to like and subscribe below. And if you'd like to help us make more free mental health resources available to and for gamers, head on over to takethis.org and click that donation button, please. Remember, we are here to help you equip your party with support, community, and mental wellness. This is Dr. B for Take This. See you next time.